Hi everyone, it's Becky here. So welcome to another new video on my YouTube channel. So this is my current art journal and I've been working on it for almost two months now, sketching pretty much every day. So I like to draw and paint watercolors from real life observations rather than photographs because I really value the experience of seeing and sensing everything from real life. So each page spread or two pages joined together takes me about an average, an hour to an hour, 40 minutes to fill. And I also did some of the pages in my Sunday sketchbook class with about 30 participants this month. And today I'm going to show you how I filled up this page spread. It's just always so exciting to start a blank page spread because it's just full of endless possibilities. I never plan ahead of what to sketch. I just improvise on the moment. And the first thing I'm going to put on the page spread is this pretty simple sunset sky with gradients of turquoise and blue. I can see it better in real life, so this video is not doing justice. It's been a pretty cold and cloudy day, minus five Celsius degree here in Vancouver. And, but the sky is really nice and peaceful. So as always, when I'm sketching a landscape or cityscape, I like to focus on the foreground element first. So as you can see, the cone-shaped evergreen tree and the tip of the rooftop of my neighbor and the little bare branch trees underneath the large evergreen. And after that, I'm connecting the house structures on the other side of the street with the evergreen tree. The rooftops stop around the midpoint of the cone-shaped evergreen tree and keep connecting more trees and poles, signs, after the rooftops, I'm adding these pretty simple rectangular square shapes that divides the different parts of the house, the eave, and another street lamp over here, little bushes in front of this house. And trees behind, there's another house on the right. So I'm just using very quick lines to summarize what I see rather than just copying. Using very simple lines to form shapes to give three dimension. And now I'm just adding this van in front of the house. Right here, the van is pretty much a very simple prism shape with two circular wheels underneath. And now I'm just adding some more details for the house on the right and tiny car part in front of it more windows, balcony. I like to color in the windows with solid black just to give more density to the houses and the lawn. The mountain behind, very nice curve right behind the houses. Bit of snow cap. That's it for the line drawing. Now I'm ready to paint watercolors. As always, I like to start painting the sky first. So I just wetted the sky area first with clear water so it's easy to make the gradients of colors. I'm adding a bit of yellow and a little bit orange for top for the top of the snow cap because this is what I see. The sunset color is a little bit reflected onto the snow caps. And now mix of green and cerulean blue to get this turquoise color for the middle part of the sky. Cerulean blue mixed with a little bit of ultramarine blue for the top. Two very similar colors. And I like to keep the sky really translucent by mixing lots of water into the paint pigment. And just wetting the street area and the houses and everything else with clear water. Adding this medium yellow mixed with yellow ochre for the exterior part of these houses. They look this kind of yellowish tone, brown for the rooftops, yellow brown, Viridian green mixed with a little bit yellow ochre for the trees here and there, 
And also there's a little bit of um, ultramarine blue mixed into this green because I want these trees to have a muted color because it's not a sunny evening. It's pretty overcast and the trees have a muted green tone. Just using the leftover mix of uh, blue, purple, and green to get this gray color for the street. Very nice and loose. I like to paint pretty loosely. Color for the lawn, the green. And using leftover color mix of uh, blue, purple, and green to paint this house. It's had a very dark color, black. Bit of shade for the van. And I actually really like the yellow tone of the house uh, coming down and blending with the street down there. It's really created a really relaxing atmosphere. And I just added ultramarine blue for the mountain. Add some more, another layer of green, reading green mixed with blue and a little bit brown for another layer for these trees and bushes so they look more dense compared to the sky. Solid objects, I like to keep them more dense by mixing more paint pigment, less water to paint them. So they have a really nice contrast with the sky with these solid colors. And another solid layer of dark brown or burnt armor Again, less water, more pink pigment to make these colors look more solid. A little bit of shade for the side of the house using leftover blue. Just to give these houses three dimensions easily. A little bit of shade for the street. And I think that's pretty much it. That's my finished sketch. I captured the essence and now it's time to stop. So I really like these random blendings happening, paints coming down from the outline and blending with each other. It's really cool, vibrant, fluffy, relaxing to look at. I don't mind the paint going outside the drawing outlines. Like here, yeah, I like it. And the next day, we had a bit of snow here in Vancouver early in the morning, very thin layer, and the sun is about to rise. So I think I'm going to do a frame because the uh, landscape on the left doesn't have a frame. I don't want these two to merge together. So yeah, drawing a frame is a really nice way to divide two different sceneries. So I started with the sun rising on the right side of this composition and then connecting the forest around it towards the middle. Around the middle part, there's this triangular structures of this house rooftop. And there's another little house behind the pole and another house on the very left, just part of it. And adding, you know, some very simple details for these houses to, to, to define that they're really houses. With simple shapes like squares, more triangles, and adding windows. Coloring the windows with solid black just really gives more definition and density to these houses. And the sun is getting higher right now, and my room is full of this warm, gorgeous sunshine. And I keep drawing some more tree structures on the background. Drawing very quickly because I'm not, I'm not really worried about the accuracy of those trees. And just drawing this house, newly constructed. The window hollows. Add some accentuation with multiple lines underneath those rooftop structures. Just write down the time. It's pretty early in the morning. So as always, I'm painting the sky first, but wetting it with my large tip Hobain water brush, grabbing some lemon yellow around the sun and a little bit around the horizon too. Warm um, lemon yellow mixed with medium yellow. 
putting on a little bit green there because the morning sky has a turquoise tone. I'm putting on this cerulean blue to blend with the green. This is the feel of the early morning sky. And I just put a little bit of um, cerulean blue for the mountain in the distance. Grabbing some radiant green and a little bit burnt sienna or brown to paint the trees. So as you can see, I already laid the first layer of yellow to, into the forest. So now this green is looking warmer, touched by the sunshine, nice and warm. And just wetting the rooftops and adding a little bit, of, tiny bits of um, lemon yellow diluted to show the sunshine on the snow rooftops. And a bit of um, dark brown. So we can make a brown darker by mixing some ultramarine blue into it. These houses are looking pretty dark early in the morning because they're against the sunshine. And i grabbing some more lemon yellow to put it around these snowy rooftops. The bright sunshine is really reflecting onto the snow. Or the snow is actually very reflective of its surroundings. Adding a bit of a blue shade here and there for the white snowy rooftops and underneath the roofs. And by mixing some blue and burnt sienna or brown into varying green, I'm getting this darker tone of green for the second layer of the forest and also less water in it, so the color looks denser. So not everything in the landscape has the same density, so we really have to pay attention to what is dense and what is light. So in this case, the forest is much denser compared to the color of the sky. In this way, we can create a sense of depth in our landscape sketches. And just adding some final polish here and there, that's it. And here is the look of the sky right now after my sketch, after 15 minutes. And I just came downstairs to have my breakfast, a cup of tea, and some butter toast. I really like their stretched shadows. Very interesting and dramatic. So I'm drawing the plate on the left first. The opening is an ellipse or an oval, drawing the rim, and now starting to draw the shape of the half pieces of toast inside. There's one underneath, and just using these simple vertical hatching lines to suggest the darker color of the rim. And using these loose little choppy lines to suggest the um, texture of bread on the surface. Drawing the ring of rim for, for the next piece. And again, use super loose little lines to show the air bubbles on the bread. And drawing the inner pattern. Just these zigzag lines. The drawing very quickly because I'm not trying to copy the pattern exactly. And these curvy lines inside the plate, really giving a three dimension to it. Adding a bit of hatching line for the uh, bottom of the plate. And now to drawing this smaller ellipse, the opening of the mug and the body and, and the handle. The inner line of the T, adding a bit of hatching line to suggest shade inside and outside. And again, writing down the time and the little note. And I also like to put down the day and the date inside a circle. I actually draw down the blind because the sunshine was too strong. My paper was too bright for filming. So yeah, so the shadows, they're just uh, back to normal now. Okay, now I'm ready to paint watercolors again. So just wetting pretty much everything with clear water by squeezing my whole vein water brush. Starting to add the lightest tone first, as I sense, 
these are not the very final colors of everything, but they need everything needs an underpainting. So this is a mix of lemon yellow, medium yellow for the surface of the tea. I'm mixing a little bit of orange. Just putting a little bit or like a um, yellow glow for the plate too, because there's sunshine shining on it. And putting on some cerulean blue, the color of the plate. Nice and light and watery. And using leftover mix of blue and purple for the shade inside and outside the mug. It was very gentle little brush strokes. And now the second layer for the toast pieces is a mix of burnt sienna or brown with a little bit of orange, especially for the rim. And putting on a little bit of orange to make it look more vibrant and charming. Things in the sunshine, they always, they always look more vibrant. And keep putting on some brown using very little choppy brush strokes just to give it more interest than a flat wash. And mixing burnt sienna and a little bit raw umber for the second layer of the tea, leaving a little bit of a um, shiny spot. And mixing a little bit blue into brown to darken it for the third layer of the tea. Again, leaving the highlight in the middle to show the shine. And grabbing some ultramarine blue to paint the pattern here around the rim of the plate. So when we're painting, we don't have to make every single brush stroke so visible. Some brush strokes can be really soft blending with the previous layer just so our paintings look more natural. Adding a bit of leftover blue-purple for the shade around the plate and underneath the toast pieces. And mixing some ultramarine blue and purple, less water, to get this more intense tone of shade for the outside of the mug and for the inside too, just a bit here and there. This mug is looking much more brighter now in the morning sunshine compared to later in the afternoon or on a very overcast day. And finally, I'm just wetting their shadow areas with clear water because I, I like to do the shadows wet on wet. I like to keep the shadows very soft and fuzzy rather than having very solid shadow shapes and darker around their bottoms. And some final polish of darker tones, less water and more paint pigment for the shadows and also inside and outside the mug. Some more dark brown for the rim. And the next day in the afternoon before I have my cup of coffee, my coffee was too warm. So I'm gonna sketch this new package of biscuits first and here's the look of my art journal spread so far i will sketch the package right here and my tea there and just spend about a minute to visualize the size of placement so this cracker package is actually a prism form as you can see i just finished drawing the first little side and the long side in the front now it looks three-dimensional just with drawing and the stripes on the package coming down as it's bending down. And just adding these little figures, label details, lotus. And I really enjoy drawing food packages because they're part of our identity. Because what we eat and what we like to eat kind of defines who we are. And yeah, just keep drawing these smaller label details on the side with very quick loose lines because I know I don't need to be exactly the same as the real thing. Okay, now I'm ready to paint watercolors. So I just grabbed some ultramarine blue just to paint the two sides away from the light source. Just give, very simply giving it a three dimension and just 
adding the red here and there. I like to uh, do the shade on a white package first because just, it's just easier to uh, define the three dimension very quickly. Now I'm just adding the red, red part of the label on top and the color of the cracker on the package. And the small side on the very left is the darkest side because it's completely opposite to where the light comes from. And just painting the shadow very quickly around the edge. It doesn't have a very big shadow because it's a thin prism. That's it. And now I'm gonna add my cup of coffee in my bunnykin mug and two pieces of biscuits. So when drawing a cup, I always like to draw the opening first, which is an ellipse or an oval, the body and the handle. The handle had a thickness and the rim had a thickness too. Drawing the inside line of the coffee and then now I'm just having fun drawing these little bunnies on the outside of the mug. And that's it for the, uh, for the mug. And I'm gonna place the biscuits behind the mug. There's one on top of another. Drawing the thickness of the biscuit and then the surface print. The letters, a little bit of texture on the edge, the reliefs, and same for this cracker. And just painting watercolors again, just wetting the mug area and the and the biscuit area with clear water. The first layer is always the lightest tone. It may not be the original color of the objects, but it's a good idea to do a light underpainting. And yellow ochre mixed with, lit with a little bit brown for the surface of the coffee. Yellow ochre for the biscuits. Just adding this green and blue and red for the bunnies. And this is like dark brown, wet on wet. Now it creates kind of shine for the surface of a coffee, even darker brown around the ring. And kind of um, dark brown for the biscuits too, especially around the skirt. And the exterior of the mug, because the light comes from the right, the left side is in shade. Just adding this leftover mix of ultramarine blue and purple. And leaving the right side not painted. Finally, just adding a bit of little shadows for the biscuits because it is in the afternoon and these things are not in direct sunshine, the shadow is just a ring around the bottoms. That's it. And I decided to paint a colored background and I decided to use this um, yellow orange color just to make this part of the uh, page look more interesting and to make the cup, the biscuits, and the package stand out on the page better. And just a quick announcement that will, I will be hosting another round of Sunday Sketch Togethers in March. So if you'd like to learn with me in real time speed and to ask questions as I go, this is a great opportunity. And the sign up link is below in the description part of this video. The first class starts next Sunday, March the 6th. And here's the look of my finished art journal spread. So thank you so much for watching my video. If you like my video, please click like and leave me a comment below. Subscribe to my channel for weekly updates. I update my channel two to three times a week. And I will see you very soon next time. Have a great weekend.